It's been 20 years since Jesus Manzano, former cyclist of the Kelme team of Dr. Ufemiano Fuentes and famous doped cyclists such as Santiago Botero, Oscar Sevilla or Fernando Escartín, broke the omerta of cycling and denounced to the Spanish press the biggest doping scheme that had been known to date and one which ended up resulting in the popular Operation Puerto where legendary cyclists like Jan Ulrich or the mythical monster of 2006, Birillo, ended up being sanctioned along with doctors, team managers and traffickers of doping substances. Manzano almost lost his life in the middle of the Tour de France. He lost his job because of his confession and denunciations, and he lost all the friends he'd had in the world of professional cycling except for one cyclist with no professional victories, and we imagine that he was also critical of doping. That was Leandro Navarrete. Manzano is now a gardener, who, as far as the cycling world is concerned, is a stinker. A dirty traitor who has, for most directors and organisers, the same status that the stoner Floyd Landis has for Lance Armstrong. And yet, he still wanted to speak to the Spanish media, us, where he had denounced his doping case 20 years earlier. And he wanted to give his opinion on cycling in the past and also in the present. And if you want us not to end up as outcasts and stinkers like Manzano, you could leave a super thanks in the video to support our content. And now, yes, let's look in depth at the whole story of this broken toy of cycling. During the 2003 season, Jesus Manzano was settling into professional cycling in his fourth season with Vicente Beldevicedo's Kelme team. It was the year of Piti Valverde's explosion. In his second year as a professional, he'd climbed to seventh place in the UCI rankings and managed to finish third in the Vuelta a España, as well as second in the World Championships, where his doped teammate Igor Astaloa took the rainbow jersey. Manzano was also performing well, and he won his first World Tour victory that same year with a stage in the Volta of Catalunya, the same legendary competition in which a histrionic José Antonio Pecha Roman defeated Lance Armstrong's lieutenant, the doper Roberto Harras of US Postal. But three weeks later, everything changed for the winner Manzano. After crawling through the early stages of the Tour de France, Manzano escaped with Richard Vironque for a 230-kilometer mountainous stage where the doping denier who denied doping in the Festina affair took the stage win and the yellow jersey. But Manzano couldn't make it to the finish. He staggered to Vironque's astonishment on a corner and within seconds fell to the ground with a thud. That day, he had taken oxyglobin, a synthetic haemoglobin prescribed for anemic dogs. Evidently, he abandoned, and the Kelme team doctors assured the press that it was heat stroke that the cyclist had suffered. A month later, Manzano was about to die again after a recharging phase in Valencia. He was injecting a small bag of bad blood into his vein, in purest tugboat Hamilton style, and Urbason had to be injected to save him. At the end of the season, Vicente Beldevicedo's team did not renew his contract, and Manzano decided to denounce all the doping he'd seen in the cycling world to the newspaper ass. With all kinds of details, Manzano began to name the countless drugs he'd taken in the Kelme team. But unlike many other dopers, without exculpating other teammates and doctors involved, he had no problem commenting that the Kelme team had withdrawn completely from the 2002 Volta Portugal for fear of a doping positive. He told how raising his salary to 48,000 euros had urged him to take more and better drugs to perform on the road. He told of how the teams got drugs on the black import market and of how he'd used serums with syringes from veterinarians to circumvent the anti-doping controls that they performed on him. And he also told how, during the 2003 Vuelta España, he was constantly administered cortisone to eliminate a pain, and yet he blew out his knee all the same. Multiple stories of doping. They were a shock for Spanish cycling, where the omerta prevailed above all. 
there was a hilarious documentary made by Spanish television. Its director, Vicente Beldevicedo, did not stop belittling Manzano, claiming that he had been kicked off the team because of his poor performance and because he slept with prostitutes during team training camps cheating on his wife. As if that had been a problem for legendary whoremongers like Jacques Anquetil or Michael Bogart. It happened throughout the history of cycling. The Spanish cycling legend himself, Probenicid Delgado, said in the same documentary that what Manzano did was done purely out of envy for being a loser as a cyclist and a bad teammate. He saw cycling as being cleaner than ever, words that are reminiscent of today, but attention, in 2004, this was the same year that Lance Armstrong had made calls to the UCI to stop the doped monsters of the Fonac and Uscatel Uscadi teams. Manzano had confessed, but then began the harassment and the demolition of his character as a traitor. Threats from teammates and directors, the rejection of the Association of Spanish Professional Cyclists, whose president, José Rodríguez, was asking other professional cyclists to sign against Manzano's testimonies. According to him, and this is a good point as any to laugh, he wanted to safeguard the dignity of the cyclists, the ones who were committing crimes with their doping practices. Spain, the world's doping paradise. And it betrayed Manzano again when Guillermo Jiménez, the director-general of the Consejo Superior de Deportes, a sort of Spanish sports minister, was dismissed ipso facto after helping Manzano and getting involved in the search for the truth. And then Manzano gave all kinds of evidence, such as vials of EPO and testosterone and forged prescriptions for TUEs. He gave them to the Spanish Cycling Federation, and these were duly destroyed. <laughs> and then the haters of this channel ask us to bring evidence of doping of cyclists. For what? To be destroyed? He also had to endure attempts at bribery. In this case, from the legendary Once team manager Fat Balbas, who wanted him to withdraw the testimony so that Operation Puerto would not take place. But it did take place. But evidently it was of little use. Some cyclists were sanctioned. No soccer players were stained. Doctors and directors didn't go to prison. And Manzano endured criticism from Vicente Baldevicedo in which the legendary director of Kelme assured everyone that his former cyclist was going to party to dope with the legendary doper and recently deceased Jose Maria Jimenez. As a result, Manzano no longer has any friends in the world of cycling, and for this reason, he thought it was time to talk about the state of cycling today. In the first place, sending a greeting to Vicente Beldevicedo, telling him that how cycling today is still involved with dark and dirty plots such as Operation Ilex of the Coco Oil Lopez and Dr. Marcos Minar. And secondly, he made jokes about the situation of Tramadolito Quintana, the cyclist brought to Europe by Vicente Beldevicedo, telling everyone that although he's already close to 50 years old and is quite sore when he finishes his working day, at least he does not need to take tramadol. And then thirdly, with an authentic reality that everyone ignores, if in his time they were already going at high speeds, totally doped up to the eyebrows, why is it now that all the speeds are increasing and all the records are being improved and yet there's still lots and lots of talk about clean cycling? Manzano insists that the Tour de France is not won by eating sirloins and that although genetics and nutrition and material have improved, for Manzano what you have to do is train hard and then put more and more gasoline in the car, the high-octane stuff. Hard and wise words from a guy that nobody in the world of cycling loves. A guy who is still, even today, getting shit on internet forums 20 years later. They're even saying that he doesn't do his job as a gardener well. <laughs> a guy with a picture of alcoholics Geraint Thomas and Bradley Wiggins. Sometimes, folks, we choose our idols very, very poorly.